Welcome to St. John's Lutheran Church, Springfield, Ohio. Today is December 30th, 2018. This is the first Sunday of Christmas. We have a guest pastor today, Pastor Bob Ford. St. John's is located at 27 North Wittenberg Avenue, Springfield, Ohio. Our telephone number is 937-323-7508. St. John's has a food pantry open Wednesdays, 9 to 1045. An outreach store open 9.30 to 1, Monday through Friday, closed on Thursdays. Rainbow Table is every Friday from noon to 1. Everyone is welcome. St. John has two services on Sunday, 8 o'clock and 10.30. On Wednesday night, we have a midweek service in the chapel at 
entire forgiveness of all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. and we'll be doing the readings.
His mother used to make for him a little robe and take it to him each year when she went up with her husband to offer the yearly sacrifice. Then Eli would bless Elkanah and his wife and say, May the Lord be made with children by this woman for the gift that she made to the Lord. And then they would return to their home. Now the boy Samuel continued to grow, both in stature and in favor with the Lord and with the people. <clears throat> The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <clears throat> the psalm this morning is Psalm 148. Alleluia. Praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise God in the heights. Praise the Lord, all you angels. Sing praise, all you hosts of heaven. Praise the Lord, sun and moon. Sing praise, all you shining stars. Praise the Lord. Heaven of heavens, and water above the heavens. Let them praise the name of the Lord, who commanded, and they were created. Who made them stand fast forever and ever, giving them a law that shall not pass away. Praise the Lord from the earth, you sea monsters and all deeps. Fire and hail, snow and fall, tempestuous winds, doing God's will. Mountains and all hills, fruit trees and all cedars, wild beasts and all cattle, creeping things and flying birds, sovereigns of the earth and all peoples, princes and all rulers of the world, young men and maidens, old and young together. Let them praise the name of the Lord, whose name only is exalted, whose splendor is over earth and heaven. The Lord has raised up strength for the people and praise for all faithful servants, the children of Israel, a people who are near the Lord. Hallelujah. The second reading this morning is from Colossians chapter 3. As God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, meekness, and patience. Bear with one another, and if anyone has a complaint against another, forgive each other, just as the Lord has forgiven you, so you also must forgive. Above all, clothe yourselves with love, which binds everything together in perfect harmony, and let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, to which indeed you were called in the one body. And be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. Teach and admonish one another in all wisdom, and with gratitude in your hearts, sing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs to God. And whatever you do, in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
And his mother said to him, Child, why have you treated us like this? Look, your father and I have been searching for you in great anxiety. He said to them, Why were you searching for me? Did you not know that I must be in my father's house? But they did not understand what he said to them. Then he went down with them and came to Nazareth and was obedient to them. His mother treasured all these things in her heart. And Jesus increased in wisdom and in years, and in divine and human faith. The gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Christ.
started with the question. Have any of you ever had any problem with your children? Okay. Was it big stuff or was it little stuff? You know, when, when they're small, they're doing things like throwing the food out of the crib. They're on the floor. They're, they're climbing out of the crib. They're taking off all their clothes and running around naked, right? How about when they get older? Ever gotten a phone call from the principal? Ever heard that your child was cut in school? How about being home by curfew, leaving you to worry and wait? Have any, has anybody ever had those kind of problems with their children? Yeah. Yeah, I've seen you get into a Now, on the other hand, some of us were problem children. We always marched to our own drum. I grew up out in the country, plenty of woods, creeks, and farmland. I got a BB gun one year for my birthday. So I wandered the woods playing Daniel Boone, shooting birds out of the trees, until the neighbor called the police. <laughs> and then when my cousins came to visit each summer, I'd get out my BB rifle and my belt pistol, and we'd each grab a trash can lid. So we'd take the pistols and shoot at each other and hold the trash can lids up with our shield. What can go wrong with that, right? Fortunately, nobody lost an eye. When I was 16, I bugged my parents to death until I finally was able to buy my own motorcycle. And was I ever proud of that bike? The first thing I did was customize it because I'd just seen Easy Rider with Peter Vaughn and Dennis Hopper. But that's all I'm going to say about my age of rebellion. You get the idea though, right? That cute little baby that we bring home from the hospital, that bundle of joy, can grow up to be somewhat of a troublesome child at times. But let's bring it back to our story this morning from Luke. Christmas Day. We all know the story, right? But I do wonder if we don't romanticize it and sanitize it too much. Shepherds watching over a baby, a star hanging over a manger, wise men bearing gifts, angels singing. It all looks pretty serene and sterile, doesn't it? But it's much, much more than that. Mary and Joseph are forced to travel to Bethlehem to be counted in the census. Mary's pregnant, about to become an unwed teenage mother. Joseph is ready to ask for a paternity test. He knows his baby's not his, and I'm not sure he's buying the whole divine intervention of this. So they go to Bethlehem. But Bethlehem was packed. Everybody else is there for the, sen for the census too. And Mary has her baby amid the sights and the sounds and the smells of a stadium. We love this bundle of joy that comes on Christmas Eve, don't we? All wrapped in swaddling. We think we know exactly what to do. Christmas Eve candlelight service, singing Christmas carols, dressed all in our finest clothes. We get this warm feeling in our hearts and we want to give. We want to serve others. We truly long for peace on earth and goodwill toward all humankind. But what do we do with Christmas as it grows up? We're not really sure how to handle something, are we? We could consider the birth of Jesus to be the birth of our faith, the beginning of our relationship with the one who comes to save all of creation. You know, as Jesus grows, we begin to see that even his parents don't know what to do with him. He turns 12 and all of a sudden he's independent. He wanders off, not telling his parents where he's going. He's in the temple teaching and preaching. He's doing what he's been called to do. When our faith is new to us, we can handle this baby in the manger because our faith is new and exciting. But as Jesus grows, as he begins to challenge us, just like we stretched our parents, Jesus stretches us to grow in our faith. We're called to live 
in solidarity with the poor, to care for the sick, to visit the prisoners in prison, to be an agent of active, nonviolent resistance and change. We're called to preach the good news, to share our faith, to serve others, no matter how smelly or dirty or how poor, however challenging they might be, we are called to serve them. What do we do with all that? All of a sudden, it feels like this Jesus is asking us to give more than we can give. This cute little baby starts to grow up, and we're not really sure how to handle it. But our reading from the book of Colossians give us, gives us some suggestions this morning. When Jesus was a baby, Mary and Joseph dressed him the way they wanted. But here, now that he's more independent, he starts telling us how to dress. Jesus tells us to put on compassion, to suffer with others, meeting others where they are. He tells us to put on kindness. The heart of Christ, being Jesus to each other and seeing each other as Jesus sees us. He tells us to wear humility. I heard somebody say once, you can get a lot done if you don't care who gets the credit. We're called to put on patience. What's that mean in this day and age when we want everything right now? We're called to put on forgiveness. How hard it is to forgive when no one's saying I'm sorry. To be truly sorry, to say it and to mean it and to live it. Hard to do. Most of all, we're called to put on love. Not a sentimental, mushy, feel-good kind of love. It's that love that, that's active. A love that is not afraid to go to work. A love that's willing to roll up its sleeves and stay committed even during the tough times. Jesus wants us dressed and ready to go. Wrapped in God's love and dressed in the gifts of the Holy Spirit, we'll be ready to take on anything that comes our way. When we put on compassion, patience, and love, we can deal with the problem child. And then we're ready for a grown-up Christmas. A faith that's mature, but still always growing and pushing us to take that next step in faith. Trusting God that no matter what, and being ready to follow Jesus wherever he leads us, we're ready to lean on God for what we need to get through this day and every other day. When it looks like there's no way to get through our problems, God makes a way. God grows us in faith so that when it really matters, we're ready. Please join me with the Apostles Creed. I believe in God, God the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Time for our offering. Our ushers today are Nelson and Linda Smith.
God. That concludes our service for today. Join us next Sunday at 8 o'clock and 10.30. Again, St. John's has a food pantry uh, on Wednesdays, open 9 to 10.45. It will resume on the week after New Year's. Food pantry is, on, is open uh, Monday through Friday, closed Thursdays, 9.30 to 1. Rainbow table is every Friday, noon to 1 o'clock. St. John's is located at 27 North Wittenberg Avenue, Springfield, Ohio. Our telephone number is 937-323-7508.